Hi Virgo, this is Morgan with Compass Rose Astrology and today we're going to be going through your astrology and tarot chat for the month of May 2023 and this in these videos I go through the transits that you're going to be experiencing and then I tie it in with a tarot story, a tarot card pool reading and then I finish off with an oracle card from Spirit to tie in any last minute kind of messages from the universe that you might need to be hearing as well. And the way I do this is these are, uh, as I do the astrology from the rising sign perspective. So you can see over here that Virgo is over on the first house on the ascendant and then um, it is that means it is a general reading so just take what resonates and leave what doesn't and then i also suggest that you watch your sun or your moon video and it, because usually depending on your birth chart you might have those placements activated a little bit heavier than your ascendant this month so i think watching those three videos can bring in a bit more of a holistic idea of what you might be experiencing this month and also make it a little bit more personalized. And you might notice that I we don't have our normal setup that I usually do. So um, thank you for bearing with me. I know um, it, it's a bit different, but I next month we will be back in our normal kind of uh, setup. And yeah, that also means, unfortunately, I don't have any of my cleansing tools, but I did do a pre-shuffle before the video started um, for the both decks and brought in the intention to bring in clear, constructive messages for you to help you and for your greatest need right now, Virgo, and I hope that this video resonates with you. So if, right off the bat, I will start off by saying that we have a bunch of aspects and transits happening right at the beginning of the month. And our first one is going to be that Pluto is going to start moving retrograde in Aquarius of your sixth house. And it's going to be moving back towards Capricorn this month, starting on the first. So through the entire month of May, Pluto will be in Aquarius. So you will still be experiencing the same things that you've been experiencing since Pluto went into Aquarius, but things will be a little more slowed down. And then by June 12th, Pluto will be moving into Capricorn. So retrograde is important because um, things are, the, the movement is a lot slower for Pluto, which is already really slow to begin with. So any sort of themes might be kind of uh, working a lot slower than usual or just kind of there might be a repetition to kind of get things done in this house. We also have on the 5th we have a full moon eclipse in Scorpio which is your third house and that's pretty powerful Virgo because the solar eclipse that this lunar eclipse is following the one that happened in April that was um, a an eclipse in Leo. And so that was in your 12th house. And the nodes are gonna be slowly moving signs. And, excuse me, it was Aries. I was like, wait a minute, that doesn't sound right. So it was in Aries in your eighth house. And so the nodes are gonna be slowly shifting between being in your third and ninth to your second in your eighth houses. And we have another Scorpio eclipse I, or excuse me, a Taurus eclipse near the end of the year. So we're not totally into the Libra Aries eclipse season. But this one that we're dealing with is a Scorpio one. And that's ruled by Mars. And the reason why I brought up the previous eclipse is because it, Aries was also ruled by Mars. And Mars has been hanging out up here in your 11th house and is going to be transiting into your 12th house um, before the end of the month. And that's going to be around the 20th and it will be opposite Pluto. So there's going to be a lot of action happening over here. And I think that with Mars being in your 12th house, I think that that might kind of aggravate, um, like maybe sleep problems. It could be, um, bringing to the surface some kind of old fears that you thought you might've gone through and dealt with <laughs> and that might be rearing their ugly head again. And, 
Um, also Mercury, we do, Mercury, we do have your Mercury going to be making a conjunction with um, Uranus and will, uh, I think it, I think it's just going to be hanging out in here for a bit. So since you're ruled by Mercury, I think that it's important to know that it is in the ninth house with Uranus and um, that Uranus is a bit of a kind of a wild card a little bit. It's, it tends to be um, independent, um, very against the status quo. So that might be something that you're dealing with in your ninth house in regards to like spirituality and beliefs and um, long distance travel or publishing or um, your faith in things. So I am just going to go ahead and jump on into your tarot reading, Virgo. Let's see how this goes. What have you been, what is Virgo been dealing with over the, leading up to this May month? Okay, let's see, anything else? Whoop, okay, we're not gonna take all of these cards. One or two more cards, please, Spirit. What has Virgo been going through? Interesting. Okay. So let's see. So for your past energy, we have the Eight of Swords, we have the King of Wands, we have the Ace of Swords, and then we have the Four of Wands. Lots of air and fire energy, first and foremost. So that means that there's a, been a lot of action in your life recently that I don't entirely see is completely within your control. Um, excuse me for, <laughs> there's some loud noises happening outside. I apologize about that, if you heard that. Um, but one major thing that is popping up here is that we do have the um, Jupiter in your 8th house is going to be moving into your ninth house um, by the end of the month. And Jupiter is kind of showing up pretty heavily in these cards. So there could be a feeling of some sort of karmic debt coming to an end here for you. Um, or one that actually has been showing up quite a bit in your life. Um, and it could also be something that relates to So uh, honestly, what I'm getting here is that we're, we have a lot of um, energy here around some sort of um, father figure. Um, the King of Wands doesn't always indicate a father figure, but with the way the planets are kind of aligning um, this month for you and what is showing up in these cards, there could be some sort of like male or masculine figure in your life. It could be a woman just with a lot of masculine kind of active traits. Um, that is showing up in your life that has I think that has you thinking thinking pretty strongly about um, what what this is it it's a little um, obscure, or not obscure, but obtuse, I guess. It's very wide, this um, topic that's coming up. And basically what I'm seeing is that you've gone through a period of time where you've kind of questioned purpose and belief in where that shows up in your life and what that means to you. And I think perhaps for a really long time, you didn't, you never really thought about it or it never really meant anything to you because maybe you grew up in like a really constrictive or really traditional environment of what it means to believe and what it means to have faith and what it means to grow up as a good person, basically. Um, and that's really what spirituality comes down to, right? Is like happiness, purpose, and being good. Um, and I think 
you have gone through a sort of, a, I want to say an awakening of sorts, because we go from the um, Eight of Swords to the one single Ace of Swords, and that can often indicate just like kind of a loosening um, of a loosening of the wands, a kind of giving in and following your heart, basically. Because the thing about the Eight of Wands, uh, Swords, I'm sorry if I said Wands before, um, I was kind of looking at these Wands, um, but basically this Eight of Swords, this character is completely bound, but it's within his power to get out, or their power to get out. The Swords aren't attacking them, it's just keeping them in place, and he's bound, and he can't see, can't see a way out. And I think there was something recently in your life. This could be some sort of masculine figure. It could even be like, you know, it is the king here. So it doesn't have to um, be an older person. It could also be a younger person, but someone that's really wise beyond their years or um, that has a really strong impact on you. And it basically has allowed you to see the truth of what belief is or maybe allow you to see how you want to incorporate that into your actual life and how you want to act upon that um for example like maybe you could be wanting to be more charitable or donate your time to your family a little bit more or um oh my gosh <laughs> It's like spirits like will you just shut up and let <laughs> let me put the cards out there for you because basically that's what the the nine of cups the six of pentacles excuse me and the death card is saying here as well because the six of pentacles is giving what you get back and um giving when you have a lot and also being receptive to taking things when you don't have a lot and it's this really strong balance of being able to know when to give and when to get and having a good relationship with other people that allows you to not be all walked all over um, and allows you to also be there for the people in your life. It's like balancing vulnerability with power and um, not allowing that power to create a di an unbalance between you and the people around you. And I think that having this perspective um, of maybe this could even be boundaries or something that you have to have with with people around you um, That it's okay to have those boundaries and it's okay to be that that strong person um, And it will lead to actual like independent success and emotional support I think it will provide you more emotional support, which is what you kind of need right now and especially um, this could be indicating maybe some um, how you relate to other people as well because Pisces is showing up here um, and so is Scorpio so this could even be like maybe how you feel towards your siblings or people that are basically like your family um, but they aren't really blood related and it's about being there for them but also not draining yourself um, to the point of exhaustion and this is a major change for you Virgo I think this is something that doesn't come naturally to you and is something that has um, really kind of changed how you approach life and it's changed in how you believe in like maybe yourself and like how you believe you want to keep your life going forward and um, maybe how you want to demonstrate that to other people and how that can be powerful and self-empowering for other people as well. Um, and maybe you even were able to have some inspiration from someone else that showed you that, hey, it's okay to have that balance. It's okay to say no sometimes. It's okay to, um, it's not okay for you to be stuck in this energy and you don't deserve that, you know, to be stuck like in your head and feeling like you're obligated and, to all these things like that's no good that's no good Virgo all right what do you have coming up for Virgo that's 
we'll take two more cards, please. Don't want to take half the deck. Okay, two more cards, please, for Virgo. One more card, please, for Virgo. Thank you so much, Spirit. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so we have the King of Pentacles, the Knight of Swords, and the Queen of Wands. So, in all honesty, Virgo, I think this is something, this is what you have to embody as you're going forward. I don't think this, this could be three different people in your life that are supporting you and um, who are allowing you to really step into your own here. Um, you... Could, uh, you, you might have some friends that are very heavy in like earth, um, earth energy basically. You might have a lot of like Taurus and Capricorns around you. You might have a lot of um, fire around you as well. And, but I also do think that this is a lot of energy that you're incorporating into your life. And the thing about the King of Pentacles is he is... Basically, um, this is the energy of accomplishment, of understanding. It's of being grounded, but also um, full success and abundance and um, defense also. And it's about having strength over your own boundaries and knowing where you stand and where others stand. And the Knight of Swords, he's. this is a bit more of an immature energy, so... Um, but it, it has the potential to like grow to the king of swords right so the knight of swords is incredibly um quick-witted and um very connected to their thoughts and to their communication and i think this is an energy here for you that you need to embody that allows you to um say your truth and speak your truth without feeling um guilty or ashamed and um, there could be someone that could teach you this along the way too um, and with the Queen of Wands this is an energy of, of passion and compassion and activity and um, really uh, embodying that divine feminine energy and I think this is something that you're going to be coming into and there is some protection here for you that will not allow you to be consumed by too much of these energies because this is a lot there's a lot of energy here um and there's also no water here so don't i think that might indicate that um it's okay to step away from your emotions and that they don't have to um rule your life I think that there are other things that need to balance you out right now and spirit might be trying to indicate that so let me see if i can get an oracle card for you so we got the freedom card the wolf I am going to read to you from the actual book um, because I don't want you to miss any messages from Spirit. I don't want to gloss over something that Spirit's trying to tell you. And this is the Winter Seer Animal Companion book, an Oracle deck. And the keywords for wolf are freedom, hunger, wildness, justice, law, leadership, and spirit. The wolf embodies many of the qualities humans most aspire to. Courage, independence, strength, and resilience, to name a few. Because of these associations, they have become one of our most loved animal spirits and can be found depicted in heraldry, amulets of protection, on weapons, and in every kind of art. They are invoked in surnames and place names the world over. Despite our having hunted them to extinction in many places, they are among the most admired creatures on Earth. In myth and folklore, the wolf is often cast as a ravenous monster driven by a need to kill and consume. One example is Loki's son Fenrir, the great wolf, who was bound to Yggdrasil, the world tree. It was necessary to confine him there to prevent him from consuming the world in the heavens. As tales such as um, Little Red Riding Hood or the Hungarian folk story of the big bad wolf and the three little pigs, wolves are compelled to consume. 
The old saying about wolf at the door is used to describe hunger, lack, financial need. In short, desperation. This leanness and all-consuming hunger is but one aspect of the wolf. It also represents justice, law, and the natural order of things. Early Christian lore tells of wolves cooperating with humans and acknowledging acts of kindness with reciprocity. One example of this can be found in the life of Saint Malua. The saint once took pity on a pack of starving wolves that were lingering near the monastic settlement. He gave them a cooked calf, which the animals accepted, with ravenous gratitude. Saint Malua decided this should be an annual event. In return, the wolves began to act as watch wolves that kept thieves and other predators away from the monastery's livestock. Despite the cliché of the lone wolf, wolves have strong family instincts and mate for life. In a reading, all domestic dogs are descend- descendants from wolves. When pondering the spirit of the wolf, it is good to bear this fact in mind. In every wolf is the potential for domestication, and in every household pup, there runs a bit of wild blood. The spirit of the wolf beckons to, wa- to our wild blood, It reminds us of the acceleration of the chase, the sweet pain of desire, the satisfaction of satiation. The wolf and the dog are divided halves of a whole, just as we are divided in ourselves. One half of of us is civilized and concerned with the quotidian, while the other longs for freedom, runs in shadows, and howls at the moon. If this archetype sings loudly to you, it may mean that you need to reconnect with your feral self. The wolf can inspire us when we have become complacent, excessively comfortable, and have lost our fighting edge. What are you passionate about? What are you hungry for? If you can't answer those questions, you may have become more lapdog than wolf. (laughs) I love that. Virgo, I hope you liked this video and that this resonated with you because it's such a beautiful reading. And I really hope that um, you share any stories that might relate to the astrology or the tarot. And I can't wait to see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you and I can't wait to see you later. Bye.